In this video, I'm going to go over activity 3 for 154. Let's see. So, I'm going to download these directions and just follow it, really. So, this is what you're going to have to do for activity 3. But in these short videos, I'll actually do them with you, okay? Where did the file go? Okay, oh, oopsies. It says, sign up on one line of the sign up sheet given by your instructor and copy the line number, principal and APR. Now we did this here. So you guys signed up already. I signed up for line 14, so that's my line, okay? Um, there are four slots still open, so some of you didn't do it just yet. So please do sign up, and when we are done setting up our Excel, you're going to replace the principal by whatever you say, these numbers, okay? You're going to use these numbers later. But Sue signed up for line 14, but that's what you're going to have to do first. Let's see. I'm, I've done that. You know, I like to draw lines on the things that I've done. It says, review the compound interest formula from section B4 of your text. I can't give that to you right now, okay? I'll give you the section B, uh, the, the compound interest formula right here. Let's zoom in so that you can write this down. Uh, the formula is A equals principal times 1 plus a fraction. That is APR divided by 4. Oh, whoopsie daisy, sorry. I was going ahead because we're going to be using 4 for um, quarterly compounding. I don't like how this parenthesis is not long. Okay, there is, there is that. So APR divided by N. And we're going to raise that to N times Y power. Okay. So we talked about this formula in section 4B. This is the compound interest formula. So keep this because we will use this formula in this activity, okay? All right. It says, remember that all formulas in Excel spreadsheet begins with an equality symbol. We know that. So whenever we're typing in formula, the first thing we will type is an equal sign. Next. Recall that to reference a cell. You can click on it or type its column letter and row number. I like to just click on it. When I see something that I want to use, I click on it. So I'll show you all these things. Okay, so I read everything that I need, and I know this formula will be useful when I'm doing my activities. So I'll highlight that in yellow. So what are we doing now? It says download spreadsheet. Download from Canvas the file Compound Interest Template Excel. Now, some of you, if you're in my class, I let you guys use this Google Sheet, right? So you can use Google Sheet too, but we can download that Excel file. So let me go find it real quick. Where is it? Here it is. Activity 3, Compound Interest, Student Template. And it says XLSX, right? That's the Excel file. So I'm going to download this file. And this is where I'm going to do my work, okay? Opening it up right now. And I'm going to make these videos into like short ones, like several of these instead of recording on one long video. So this is the file you need to download, okay? I'm going to save this file somewhere in my computer. I'll save it on my desktop. So that when I'm done with this, I can submit this on Canvas, okay? Now, what was your line number? I signed up for line number 14, okay? Uh, line number 14, and my principal is $180. Sorry, I got so many tabs open right now. $180. I don't like this, you know, guys. I like this to be a dollar amount. I'm going to click on this cell, and I'm going to format it as 
uh, I'll do currency. I like currency because dollar sign appears right next to it. You can do accounting too. I think they're the same really. I'm going to click on currency so that it looks like money. All right. What was the next one? APR. For my line number, APR is 7.6%. Okay. 7.6. Oh, I like how they already got the percent symbol right here. So that's how we start the problem first. But hey, I want to do this together with you like you by watching my video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to use the same number, okay? Um, how about, because those are my numbers, I'll just go ahead and I'll write this down somewhere real quick. My P equals 180 and APR equals 7.6%. But I will go ahead and use the same number with you. So if you can change your number to 1500 for me for the principal and change the APR to, let's see, why, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because this document that somebody created said use a prototype okay look they created something for us over here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this work ourselves and see if we get the same numbers if it does come out with same numbers then we did something right if it doesn't if we don't get the same number then we made a mistake somewhere so that's why that's the reason i'm asking you to type in the principal 1,500 and for APR, go ahead and type in 7.5%. And when we are done with this project or uh, activity, I'll ask you to type in your principal and your APR, okay? Okay, so that's a good start. I'm gonna go ahead and save this real quick. All right, now let me go back to my Word document because I'm following this Word document, okay? Let me zoom out a little bit. So we did all these things so far. Ta -da. Okay, now let's talk about, maybe I'll do like step number one too. I'll try to make like 10 minute videos instead of going like 15, 20 minutes. It says, using the template you have downloaded and the prototype figure below, and that's what they're talking about. They're talking about, hey, these are the numbers you should see if you type in 1500 for principal and 7.5% for APR, okay? So this is like our way of checking if you're on the, if we're doing it right okay it says construct a compound interest spreadsheet using three different method iteration which is taking us to like step by step like starting from quarter zero all the way to however many quarters um using this huge table part is the, the first method using formula well formula is what we know already we know how to plug this number in and find the amount right and the last one is the excel function you and i talked about this excel function future value already so we'll kind of review these okay i think the difficult part is typing in these formulas for people who never used excel before right so hopefully this video is helping you now let's see that will arrive at the very same balance if properly done okay so if we don't get the same number that means we're doing something wrong okay all right let's see be sure to type in the given box the same principal, compound, and APR as the prototype figure below. What are they saying? This sentence is saying that you need to have, ignore the line number. Don't worry about the line number, okay? You're going to have your own line number there. But you need to make sure that you have 1,500 for principal, 4 for compound, and 7.5% for APR. If you have that, we're ready to start this together. I have that ready. It says from quarter number one, from quarter number one, row eight, and thereafter, you will be building formulas that are flexible enough to accommodate other values you type into the given box later. What does that mean? I think we're just told to use cell reference. I'm going to ignore this because I don't think I understand this part okay so i will go over like step one two and three here okay and i'll probably take a break okay step maybe just step number one uh iteration step method one it says link by a cell reference the total cell of quarter zero cell e7 to the given principal value in d2 
<laughs> All right, let me tell you what this is talking about, okay? What they are saying is, what number should go in here? So in words, how much money should you have after quarter zero? How much money should you have if you didn't wait any time? Okay, well, we want this $1,500 $1, to grow after so many quarters, right? By the way, we're looking at 36 quarters. So look, how many years are we waiting? 36 divided by 4, and I'm dividing by 4 because there are 4 quarters in a year. We're looking at a 9-year investment, right? But if you don't wait any, how much money should you have? Well, the same amount of money that you put in in the beginning, right? So what they are saying is this. In this very cell, double click, type in an equal sign, and put how much money should you have in here? The principal amount, right? So type in equal sign and click on D2. Or you can really use your keyboard and do D2 if you want to. doesn't matter. It's the same thing. And hit enter. If you do that, you will get 1500 now guys something is bothering me what i want is i want these cells to be formatted as dollars like with dollar sign so you don't have to have it but i'm talking about money so i want these to have a dollar sign so i'm gonna go ahead and select all these cells and click on currency so that it adds a nice dollar sign i just like it okay so that's what step number one was saying if you have equal sign d2 in e7 we're done with step number one okay so let me show you they said in e7 put equal sign d2 we did that so we're done with step number one let's go to step two now let principal from quarter one okay which is going to be in cell c8 be referenced to e cell e7 now this may not make much sense but i'll explain this to you okay so what we are doing is simply we're going to type in equal sign E7 and C8. Now let's see why we're doing this, okay? So what they want is this. How much money or what is the principle for quarter one? Okay, what goes in this blank? Now the principle for quarter one is how much money was in here at the end of quarter zero, right? So the money that we had, the total amount that we had in the previous quarter is going to be this amount. So do an equal sign and you go click on the 1500, but don't click on D2, click on E7. Okay, so that if you go down a line, okay, it's going to go and uh, automatically select. If you copy this formula, the Excel will copy... Um, the formula in a way said that it selects the previous the, the previous line the line above the, the total from the line above okay i'm not sure if i'm making sense but all right let me hit enter but that is step number two that's what you're going to do for step number two let me show you what i typed in in c8 type in equal sign e7 that's it i'm done with step number two now i'll really do step three and i'll really stop okay because We've done this for a while. All right, in step number three, it says for the interest in quarter one, create a formula by multiplying the principal by the given APR, divide the given, divide by the given compound. Okay. Note, because you will want to always use the same given APR and you know what guys, this part is going to be the confusing part. This is where we have to use the dollar signs and stuff. So I've been going for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop this video and I will come back and talk about step number three in my second video soon, okay?